We pity your pathetic dependence on this web video for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. Fixing Fukushima Daiichi is the more urgent task at hand, but that's riddled with challenges. TEPCO President Naomi Hirose says his company delayed the construction of underground walls around damaged reactors because other work was given priority. The walls are designed to block any leakage of contaminated water. Hirose testified on Friday at a lower house committee meeting held to discuss the problem of massive groundwater contamination at the facility. He admitted TEPCO was aware at an early stage that radioactive water was leaking into the sea. Three months after the nuclear accident, the utility decided to build underground walls around the reactor buildings. When asked why TEPCO officials did not pursue the plan, Hirose said they had to deal with many hot spots of radiation as well as contaminated debris. Hirose said the government and TEPCO initially decided to build underground walls near the sea instead of around the reactor buildings. The seaside walls were built by solidifying an embankment with chemicals. The current plan calls for building walls around the reactors by freezing the soil, which is unprecedented in scale and cost. Crews at Japan's damaged nuclear plant are facing a new challenge as they work to keep contaminated water from seeping into the sea. They say an underwater barrier to prevent the spread of radioactive materials from Fukushima Daiichi has developed a tear. NHK World's Kunihiro Yamamoto takes a closer look at the damage. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe visited Fukushima Daiichi last week to see firsthand how crews are trying to contain contaminated water. An official with operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, offered assurances. The orange barrier over there is called a silt fence. We think it is effective in containing radioactive water. <laughs> This is what TEPCO says now. Damage was found in the silt fence near reactors 5 and 6. The silt fences are made of polyester. They are installed near intake canals and other areas in the plant's port. They are suspended like curtains and held down with weights at the bottom of the sea. TEPCO officials say the barriers are effective to a certain extent in preventing radioactive water from escaping the port. Okay. The fences also keep silt from clogging water intake systems. In all, crews have installed seven of them. The silt fence has torn, but we don't think this situation will have any immediate effect on the contamination within the port. What's so funny now? I don't just think funny things. The same barrier ripped in April. Engineers blamed high waves. They haven't said what caused this recent year. But this week, a severe tropical storm has been picking up waves along the coast. TEPCO officials say workers found no abnormalities in other silt fences. But this latest development shows the barriers are vulnerable and require constant monitoring. You have your calendar in the sink and just slowly pour your water into it with all your ziti. Yes, it's not the end of the world. So let's carry on irradiating our planet with nuclear waste. You couldn't make this shit up. Fish caught off the coast of Fukushima is now being sold in local markets. And in a surprise announcement this morning, U.S. Deputy Surgeon General Greg Paulson stated that, quote, it's fine to smoke cigarettes if you only smoke while drinking. Fishermen resumed offshore test fishing on Wednesday. Such fishing was suspended early this month by concerns over leaks into the sea of radioactive water. Fishermen and wholesalers prepared around 1,500 kilograms of hairy crabs, squid and other seafood. The local fisheries cooperative said no radioactive substances were detected in the 11 types of seafood caught this time. Any catch must clear a radiation test before being sent on to the markets. 
The shipped products were soon on the shelves of local retailers. At the supermarket in Soma, shoppers bought seafood after checking the attached test certificates. I don't have any worries about eating this fish as long as it has been properly examined. It's another bullshit experiment. To be honest, I don't want to eat this fish because I'm worried about radiation. The seafood is expected to be put on sale on Friday in Sendai, the prefectural capital of neighboring Miyagi Prefecture, and in Tokyo on Saturday. IAEA Director General Yukiya Amano has discussed the leakage of radioactive water at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. He was interviewed by Japanese media in Vienna ahead of his scheduled visit to Japan in October. It is not sufficient, even if Japan says we have been monitoring levels of seawater radioactivity and we will release the data to the world. It's crucial for Japan to conform to the international standards and cooperate with international bodies from the planning stage. The IAEA plans to send inspectors to Japan this autumn. The agency is considering including seawater analysis specialists on the mission. We'll make more of it every day, even though we don't know what to do with it, and its deadly nature will exist for hundreds of thousands of years. The head of Japan's National Police Agency has instructed rather, police headquarters around the country to tighten anti-terror security at nuclear power plants. Vulnerability of nuclear plants has been exposed. We are concerned about the possibility of terrorists targeting them. NPA Chief Tsuyoshi Yoneda was speaking at a meeting of about 200 senior officers in charge of anti-terrorism measures. Yunida stressed the need for drills to prepare for such attacks. He said improving the capability of anti-terror firearms units is essential to ensuring the safety of the facilities. Japanese police have beefed up security at nuclear facilities since the Fukushima crisis. Measures include arming firearms units with machine guns and the introduction of radiation-proof vehicles. TEPCO officials are set to apply for inspections so they can fire up two reactors on the Sea of Japan coast. They've been updating safety features at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant. The governor of the prefecture hosting the facility has given the application the green light. So we'll carry on building nuclear power stations on unstable parts of the Earth's crust. TEPCO President Naomi Hirose met on Wednesday with Niigata Governor Hirohiko Izumida. He explained plans to install additional safety equipment for the reactors. Filter vents are designed to release pressure in containment vessels while limiting massive emissions of radioactive substances if an accident occurs. Now, while Niigata officials have approved TEPCO's application, they've added a condition. They want managers to consult with local officials on how the vents will be used to prevent residents from being exposed to radiation. Nuclear plant operators need to pass safety checks by the Nuclear Regulation Authority before they restart reactors. The regulators introduced tougher rules in July. All 50 reactors in Japan are offline now. Four utilities have applied for inspections to restart 12 units. TEPCO officials haven't submitted any applications until now. They found it difficult to file for safety checks at Kashiwazaki Kariwa because of initial opposition by the governor. Izumida had expressed concern that filter vents could be vulnerable to earthquakes. TEPCO is eager to restart the reactors as it is facing growing fuel costs for non-nuclear thermal power generation. U.S. President Barack Obama says he's spoken by phone with his Iranian counterpart Hassan Rouhani. 
They had the first conversation between American and Iranian leaders in more than 30 years. Just now, I spoke on the phone with President Rouhani of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The two of us discussed our ongoing efforts to reach an agreement over Iran's nuclear program. Obama said Rouhani promised his country would not develop nuclear weapons. He said he now believes the U.S. and Iran can reach a comprehensive solution over Tehran's nuclear program. A White House spokesperson says the conversation lasted 15 minutes. The last time U.S. and Iranian leaders spoke was the year of the hostage crisis in Tehran, 1979. Just in case we want to wipe out millions of other humans and turn large parts of the planet into uninhabitable radioactive wasteland. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe used the UN General Assembly to highlight his country's role as a force for peace. He says he's pleased to have had the chance to outline what he wants the Japanese to do on the global stage. I was able to convey my resolve to the world that Japan will play a more active role for global peace, stability and prosperity. Abe also commented on his meeting with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani. I feel that President Rouhani has a positive attitude and he is trying to cooperate with the international community. He says he'll work for the peaceful resolution of Iran's nuclear issue based on past friendly ties with the country. Congratulations, you have completed this video with flying colors. Please await your certificate and complimentary fruit basket in the mail before proceeding any further.